Boyan Bogdanovich might be the crown jewel of the trade deadline this season. If you were a time traveler, which would be really sick, by the way, but if you were a time traveler and you came back from February 10th, which is the day after the NBA trade deadline, and you told me, hey, slightly, Boyan Bogdanovich was the best player in the NBA who got traded this season. That wouldn't really surprise me all that much. Now, I'm not saying that Boyan Bogdanovich is the best player in the NBA, obviously. I'm not even saying that he's the best player whose name has come up in trade talk so far this season. But with the way teams are evaluating their players right now, with the way that they are pricing the market, with all, all of these first round picks required to, to acquire all-star level talents, right? And with how the play-in tournament has changed the way teams view themselves in the lead up to the deadline, it really wouldn't shock me at all if Boyan Bogdanovich is the best player who ends up getting traded. And I really think that whatever team lands him, if he does end up getting traded, because there's a world where he doesn't get traded at all because he just signed an extension with the Pistons. But with the, with the way the league's trending offensively, a guy like Boyan Bogdanovich would be a tremendous fit for any contending team. The league is built around offense now. It's built around shooting. It's built around guys who can not only shoot off the catch, off the dribble, but guys who can attack closeout, guys who can put pressure on the rim, kick out of those opportunities, guys who can create shots for themselves. Boyan Bogdanovich fits that mold to a T. Like, that's just who he is. He's currently having the best season of his career offensively, 21 points per game, a career high, 63% true shooting percentage, the best of his career, 41% from three on nearly six attempts a game. That's the best percentage of his career. And you know what? You want to know something crazy? Get this. Him and Steph Curry are the only two players in the NBA to average over 20 points per game on 62% true shooting or better, 40% from three or better, and 90% from the free throw line or better. Huh? How do you like that for cherry picking? He's having a tremendous season. If you look at his shooting profile, I mean, it's hard to imagine a scenario where he doesn't fit. Like, I can't think of a team a contending team that'd be like, no, 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 we don't want it. We don't want a guy who can shoot threes at an elite clip and create offense for himself. That that doesn't fly here. Can run him off of screens. He averages 1.12 points per possession off of screens, which is in the 99th percentile across the entire NBA. He can spot up for three. He's averaging 1.18 points per possession on spot ups, which is the in the 97th percentile. This guy can just flat out shoot the basketball. He doesn't need much space at all either. But there's more to his game than that, which is what makes him such an intriguing offensive player, because a lot of guys in the league today can shoot, but can you do anything else? He averages one point per possession on nearly two isolation attempts per game, placing him in the 70th percentile. And you know what? That's that's a valuable skill to have, this ability to create for yourself. As this season goes on, we get into the playoffs, which I'm assuming whatever team trades for Boyan will probably be a contender. You need that creation ability whenever we get to the postseason. And he averages nearly nine drives per game and shoots 54% on drives. So he has this ability to put pressure on the rim he also gets out and runs in transition more than anybody on the Denver uh, on the Detroit Pistons sorry I think Jay Nivey actually might have a, a little tiny bit more uh, uh, time in, in transition than him so far this season but still Boyan Bogdanovich gets out runs the floor just looking at some of the advanced numbers he has a plus three offensive estimated plus minus putting him in the 93rd percentile this is also the best number of his career plus 2.8 offensive Raptor so far this season which is also the best of his career I will never understand the Raptor stat Ever. Why is it called Raptor? I don't know. Is it because of the Toronto Raptors? I have zero clue. I still use it. Pistons are 5.2 points per 100 possessions better offensively when he is on the court. And this is a trend that's just kind of followed him wherever he's been throughout his career outside of a couple of seasons. Every team that he's been on has been better offensively when he plays. I think one of the biggest benefits of trading for a guy like Boyan is he's been there. He's been in the postseason many a times he's been in fairly deep runs in the playoffs he knows what it takes to win in the postseason he's had some legit good moments he's averaged 18 points per game pretty much spot on in each of his last three trips to the postseason on 60 percent true shooting over that time you know when defenses clamp up that's a great number man like 18 points per game on that efficiency in the postseason that is that is nothing to sneeze at man i can tell you this as a mavericks fan obviously boy was on the jazz last season mavericks and jazz played in the first round Donovan Mitchell really struggled in that series, and it was like Boyan and Jordan Clarkson. I was terrified of those guys. Every time they touched the ball, I was like, yep, that shit's going in. I remember that game six, Boyan was wide open for that three that would have won the game and forced the game seven. It was in the air. I was like, oh, there's no way he's missing that. Like, this guy's honestly killed us for mo most of this series. There's no way he's missing that. And he did, thank God. If you go back to the 2020-2021 playoffs where the, the Jazz famously lost in the second round to the Clippers who just annihilated their defense, really exposed... I wouldn't say Rudy Gobert, but exposed the Jazz defense as fraudulent. During that playoff run, the Jazz had a 125 offensive rating when Boyan was on the floor. That is a crazy number in the regular season. That is an absurd number 
in the playoffs. Now, obviously, there's some context that needs to be added to that. When we're talking about postseason minutes, obviously, Boyan's going to be sharing the floor with Donovan Mitchell, Mike Conley, Jordan Clarkson, all the main guys for the Jazz. So I wouldn't necessarily say it's all because of Boyan, obviously. And that postseason, it wasn't the bubble playoffs, but it was the first postseason after the bubble. Most stadiums did not have fans. It was a really weird environment where there was a ton of scoring, especially for the postseason. But still, this guy's been to the playoffs. He's performed well in the playoffs. He shoots well in the playoffs. Half-court offenses are just better when Boyan is out there. And I just look around the league, teams that need guys like this, like you could trade for Boyan, you could be a team that's really kind of struggled so far in the half court, which we all know is what matters in the postseason. You want to be a good half court offense whenever you get to the playoffs because transition opportunities diminish greatly. Look at a team like Milwaukee, who is reportedly interested in Boyan. They, they have the worst half court offense among any of the contenders. And granted, some of that is injury, right? Chris Middleton hasn't played at all this season, but we don't know when Chris Middleton's coming back. And if he, when he does come back, we don't know what he's going to look like because he looked terrible in the seven games he has played so far this season. A guy like Boyan would help them tremendously in the half court setting. Or I also look at a team like Dallas who is on pace to have one of, if not by efficiency numbers, the best half court offense ever, which is crazy to say, considering it's Luka Doncic and kind of a bunch of dudes, no offense to him. Imagine adding Boyan into that mix. Like then it just becomes this unstoppable juggernaut offensively. We're like, okay, well, what the fuck do we do? Because if we help off Luka, he finds Boyan who could shoot with very minimal space required, or he can attack an aggressive closeout. The ball starts to move. Now we're in deep, deep danger. Obviously there's concerns with Boyan. Defensively, he's not very good, right? When he locks in, there's some moments where it's not terrible, but he's just not a good defensive player. All the peripherals show that he's just been an, a, a net negative defensively throughout his entire career. I will give him this though. Right, and I'll go back to that series last year. Obviously, the Jazz lost in six to the Mavericks. I'll give him this. He, at times, looked like the only guy on the court who gave a fuck defensively against the Mavs. Right, he still, like, he still got cooked by Luka. He ended up getting the Luka assignment to close out the series. And I won't hold that against players, right? Because Luka just dominates everybody. It doesn't really matter who it is. So I won't hold that against Boyan. But he was at least trying. Like, I remember he was picking up Luka the full length of the floor. Like, he was pressuring him in the backcourt. <laughs> I mean, it didn't really work that effectively. It, it, maybe, it maybe gave Luka some trouble here and there, but it didn't work a lot effectively. But I remember all of the commentators, the ESPN and TNT guys were like, oh my God, I can't believe Boyan's picking him up the full length of the floor. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, okay. But I give him props for trying. I do give him props for trying. Like I said, he really looked like the only guy for Utah last postseason who looked like he gave a fuck defensively, which, you know what? I respect that. You also have the added benefit of he did just sign an extension with Detroit. And I, I think it's pretty fair value. It's like $20 million a year over the next two seasons. He's 33, about to turn 34. So the age component definitely factors in. But when you look around the league, I mean, that's like Tim Hardaway Jr. numbers financially. That's Duncan Robinson numbers financially. Obviously, Boyan is much better than both of those guys. So I think it's pretty fair value. So, you know, a contending team, and you have to remember, like most of these contending teams, pretty much all of them are going to be over the cap regardless so not only do they add this piece that they could help that they could use to help make a push this year but they have on the roster for the next two seasons i just think boyan's going to be a really 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 coveted asset at the trade deadline i don't think it's going to be a crazy price to get him just because of his age and, and, and everything that i just mentioned but it's going to be somebody who can help now help in the future detroit's done a great job they got him for saban lee and kelly olenic like that's all they had to give up for him and it's very possible they flip him for a first round pick, maybe even a young player attached to that. Great job by Detroit. I, there's a chance that they just keep him. I highly doubt it though. Boyan Bogdanovich, very interested to see how this all plays out.